we are going to get straight into the author. We're going to talk about the two episodes this time, episodes three and four. And these are, I would say, the the breakout two episodes of the Orville, where I think people, the people who were very very resistant to it, people who were struggling even more than Ian was, is with the with the legal aspect of it and the likeness of it to Star Trek, who were quite cynical about it or resented it, started to either come to the party or accept the fact this was damn good TV. So yeah, the first episode we're going to talk about it's called about about a girl here we are it is it's about a girl it's written again by seth mcfarlane directed by brannon braga that's the third episode of this of this first season and uh, when dr finn refuses bortus and clyden's request for her to perform sex reassignment surgery on their daughter it's a standard mocklin practice on the rare occasion a female is born into that all-male society they petition captain mercer to order the doctor to uh, perform the procedure. Mercer refuses. Uh, Bortus and Clyden quickly arrange to have the procedure performed on a Mocklin vessel until one of them begins to have second thoughts. This was originally broadcast on the 21st of September 2017 and it's the episode I think that had everybody talking. Guys, uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. Rabbi, you couldn't wait to get into this why why is that what's so potent about this particular episode that stayed with you and made you look forward to watching it again so much uh well firstly it got it got better on the second viewing right it it mm -hmm. it, it did what great star trek does really well it presented a very contemporary argument uh that's uh, controversial that's uh, mm -hmm. that people have strong opinions about uh, listen it it it, it waited the deck in one favor or it, it, they did the best they could but yeah. they, they had a conversation which is something that is so lacking. And if, well, it was lacking in 2017. It's a hundred times more lacking today. They had a conversation about something where they didn't assume they were right. right? And I, it's, uh, uh, they came to the conclusion they were right. Which is fine. Okay. Which is, uh, <laughs> they had the conversation and it was really good. It was really good. It was really, and it got me thinking, got me, got people talking. Um, this is what good, t this is what good TV is for. This is what Star Trek should be. Right. Do you and, think? Yeah. The, the, the reason why, obviously, with with other shows, when you when you frame an idea like this and a conversation like this, and you explore a uh, a whole issue of this nature, usually with a lot of shows, this includes a lot of genre shows. They would do so do so by visiting another world, another community, and have it be the concern, be it be a an issue that's sprang up in the life of a character who is just in it for the week. And you'll probably never see them again by by uh, attaching this to one of the main cast members. It me it meant really that they had to decide at the end of the episode to go one way or another, didn't they? Whereas if it had been like an episode of the week and just just a one off character, they could have sort of sent them off to make their own decision and left us left us wondering. So it's quite brave. It's it's a brave story yeah. to talk about. Which actually, it's brave to talk about an issue in such a rounded way. Generally, it's really brave to have to um, have it concerning one of the regular cast members, and even braver still to to make a firm decision and and run with that dramatically over a series that could be could be going on could be going on for a few years, couldn't it? Uh, Keith, you're new to the show, completely new to the show. How did this How did this episode? How did this episode strike you as it was rolling out? Because obviously you noticed the balance on the first two episodes between comedy and drama, some of which you felt landed better than others. But it, it's, it, uh, it hadn't made you seasick, had it? You, you're keeping up. But this is a hard lean into fairly straight drama, isn't it? So how do you think it fared? Uh, yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, I mean, there is still you know, humour in there that I feel is a bit misplaced in the odd uh, here and there, even though it did make me laugh as well. But um, yeah. in terms of dealing with the issue, I think what they did here, um, which was very Star Trek, you know, very original series and very next gen, is uh, they dealt with a contemporary issue, but they didn't do it in a preachy manner. So I felt that... Uh, they gave both sides of this um, debate uh, a voice, 
in this and yeah. you, you know very very much in the sort of you know i guess the bill has its kind of a of the prime directive that you have in star trek um you know where on one hand they want to respect the alien culture and the culture of of, of that society and community uh but on the other hand it involves a a crew member that works you know for the again whatever they call the equivalent of the federation i've forgotten yeah. what it is already but uh the, uh, United the, planetary, the planetary union and they're also planetary in union. this case but they're the only uh, Bo uh Clyden and bortus they are the only functioning healthy relationship on this ship aren't they because obviously ed and kelly are divorced so that if that's a strained relationship these are the only two people who are actually together and to sort of to put them to put them into a conflict right away another brave thing to do yes yeah no I, I i thought it was i thought it was i thought it was handled really well um because they, they they obviously used the comedy and the parody aspect to sort of challenge it like obviously the the yeah. whole turning point for um you know our character is the fact that they show him rudolph the red nosed reindeer animation and, and you know that's what kind of uh, but, 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 yeah, at the end at the end different. there was a great bit of that when, when he gives the baby the little uh, uh rudolph uh, uh doll i didn't notice that the first time he no, used a little cuddly rudolph which i thought was that's such a clever way of tying it just tying it all together right giving hope for the future because it would be seemingly hopeless for him right but it, i i loved it i absolutely loved it so and it's funny enough fun enough keith the thing that struck me about you when we spoke last about this show the thing that that uh didn't sit so well with with you were the 20th 21st century sorry pop culture references uh well 20th and 21st century and we and we do we do get them we continue to get them in both the episodes we're going to talk about this time but here it's it's used in a very precise way isn't it that as you say that animation uh, bought us watching that animation with a couple of his crewmates with uh, with the two guys from uh, the navigator and the helmsman you know they take him to one side don't they with the beer all that sort of thing you can see it coming a mile away but it's again it's all played so beautifully but uh, you know so that resistance you had to our culture being part of this show that matters less to you this time we're just getting used uh, to it. well yes and no um i still like the courtroom scene i thought they did extremely well but of course you know when he comes in and just you know starts doing dick joke stuff all of the time um i did sort of <laughs> roll my eyes ab about that a little bit um i'm, I'm not saying it wasn't funny it was yeah, yeah. but it, it just sort of felt it was like ah oh, they were making a really good point in a really good scene and now they've they, they've gone there and turned it into a laugh but i'm probably taking it too seriously is, is the problem i don't think i think the problem's more with me than it is the show <laughs> so you're, you know. you're on the on the cusp there of acceptance and little moments like that can still sort of take you out of it well, well i was actually i've got to say um i was surprised how moved i was by this episode genuinely moved um come the end of it and yeah. and if you'd have told me two months ago before you decided to even do this you know I'd, I'd never even seen the orville and if you said to me oh you'll see an episode of, of the orville and you know you will actually be quite moved by the experience of it i'd have thought you were crazy <laughs> at every junction in this story bear in mind that it's still only a 40 45 minute runtime max at every junction in this story they throw something new into it so i won't say i won't say it changes your mind all the time ian you know one you know you you see we're looking now at a picture of of ed confronting bortus here you know when he's refusing point blank refusing to facilitate this procedure to he's refusing to order claire to perform this on a number of different levels and you're right behind ed but then you can't help but start to sort of relate to bortus and Clyden, and then you get a certain way into the episode too just when you think you know the whole story and then it turns out that Clyden was 
originally born a female and he explains why he feels the way he does about it and again it makes you look at the entire story slightly differently doesn't it Ian as a writer the shape of this episode of this script I th yeah. is it, does it impress you the way it impresses me yeah it does and I'm not surprised though because um Seth is very well versed in taking something of today and making it into a comedy you just got to look at Family Guy that's basically what Family Guy does every week it takes a subject that he doesn't agree with and he turns it into a comedy to prove a point that it's crap basically the idea or or what society is doing is, is absolutely crazy and this is no exception here this is what um Seth does and he does it very well actually um in this this whole show um but again I keep saying this it, this is Star Trek this is literally Star Trek it really is this is the kind of stories that end up in you know the next generation or um not not voyage obviously but the next generation did stories like this like the, the one with with um data you know yeah. is, is, is he's got the right to, yeah has he got right yeah exactly has he got right to live is he a property of star starfleet blah 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 and this is this almost the same thing i like the conclusion they came to because it's very star trek you're not supposed to meddle in other cultures um you know what other cultures believe and stuff like that but um and i did it i did thought he he kind of put it on thick when we had that woman they discovered in in the uh, you know and she was the one that created those sayings and stuff like i think he put it on thick and also the bit where he, the, she gets some um, the i can't remember her name the little girl so i keep calling her the, the little girl sorry what's her name again the one that's strong uh, oh, Alera. Uh, yeah what's what's her name Alera. Alera. yeah Good when time. Yeah, got her to take the square and make it into a circle and stuff like proving that she's strong, or whatever, and blah blah blah. You know, they did pour it on thick and stuff like that. But I, I was, I was a bit disappointed with the conclusion they came to. But then I realised, well, you know, it's it's their choice. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 their culture. It's it's their thing. So, but anyway, you know, it's it's a great episode, and and you really want to know what's going to happen next. You really want to know how they're going to resolve this problem. You know, I and that's the that thing them them making that call at the end of the i don't really know i can see both sides mm. both sides to to this i'm obviously more as a a human being living in the 21st century obviously i'm more in line with with ed and with the his way of thinking towards towards this but the the call that they make in the episode i think is the most potent yeah not, not just not just for this for this self-contained episode of tv for for a show that let's you know let's put it into perspective for a show that was just establishing itself proving itself justifying its own existence that it would that it could tell these kind of stories so confidently mm. so it was important it was important that it did that it wasn't wishy-washy about the conclusions that it reached and that it was sure in its footing of where it could go from here on so i i, I appreciate all aspects to that and they do they do return to these issues and obviously the the two uh, characters Bortus and Clyden they've got to live they've got to live with this with this decision and I th find that really really interesting That's well it, you know but both of them you know they're very strong in what their in their beliefs and as I said Seth did pour it on strong with the with females is just as good as male male characters like the, the boxing bit when um Again, that girl was boxing, <laughs> pushed him through the wall when she punched him, smashed the thing, whatever. But I'm just saying, you know, it, it's 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 a it's a it's a subject matter that you can talk about, you know, like like you know, you know, women have the same rights as men, blah, blah. You know, it's all that kind of thing, isn't it? It's, that's what he's saying. So yeah. Um, but you know, when you throw uh, alien species into the mix, you know, how do you deal with that? And it's a, and it's a good question. You know how, how do you deal he's with He's also it? he's also talking about uh, the the idea of of defective genes as well. You know you can yeah. you can sort of you can focus you can hone this down the the topic to to the tiniest degree to something that's sort of so so close to it, or you can you you can expand it completely. Mm. You know to, to talk about any any kind of uh, human issue, the birth birth issue. You know we um, we talk about things like uh, things like Down syndrome. Yeah, uh, and all, all these all these various different things that uh, that people that that the human race has uh, encountered. Yeah, from now, from from birth, and that people and that people live with and triumph over. For example, you know, uh, we talk. I've talked at times about autism, about my own experiences with autism within my own family, and uh, seeing a, a, a close family member 
be a sort of face those challenges, be empowered by them. You mm. know, would at, at birth, if I could have, if I could have done something so that so that this person wouldn't have to face those issues and reach those points in life you know i know it's, i know it's not the same but it's an it's another it's an well, issue that's what that he was saying wasn't he dan that's what that's what um there was it borders what, what wife or husband i don't know anyway that's what oh, yeah. he was saying wasn't he? he was saying look if she if she if we allow her to be a girl then she's going to be picked upon She's going to be ostracized. No, no, no. It's more you know, that's what, it, that, that's she's what they were have, saying. She's going to have her life destroyed. Yes, she's exactly. Right. And that's yeah. why they wanted wanted her to be a boy, so she wouldn't have to suffer that. It's exactly what you're saying, Dan. You know, if you if you had the power to stop your child being, you know, this or that, whatever, you know, and any, that any, suffer, suffer, any you, suffering at all. And yeah, exactly. Rabbit, would you stop very, it? Yeah. That's a very dramatic kind of. It's a very extreme example yeah. that they frame, yeah. particularly to this society. This on the surface of it, quite intolerant society. Yeah. And, and yeah. yet they seem generally a, a productive society, that they've got balance there, that they've got respect within their own boundaries. So you think, from their point of view, who are we turning up on this flashy starship, throwing yeah. our rate around, and Kelly there striding around the courtroom, looking down her nose, just people just dropping out of the sky and telling them how to live. Yeah. And you think, well, okay, I can probably see how they would how they would feel about it too those courtroom scenes as you say did remind me of measure of a man it did yeah. remind me as well rabbi of star trek six with the klingon court yeah yeah, and, yeah i'll tell you well, i'll tell you what it didn't remind me of at all the uh absolute candor what was it called again the thing in the uh discovery the season three where they had the 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 oh. vulcan romulan Oh, that was awful. Unification part three. Pairing the two is just a bit. Do you remember, sorry, do you remember that bit where um, Borders' wife or husband, I don't know how to put the, what, anyway, he, he goes to buy a shirt and then Borders comes in and says, you know, um, we we, re we require privacy to that other guy. <laughs> and the other guy goes, you don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> he walks out. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of humour is slightly off a bit, isn't it? But I still find it funny, though. I, yeah, I thought it was it's, hilarious. It's, it's, it's Actually, you know, Dan, yeah. I think you said the, 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 the really the most important word that differentiates this from other Star Trek-style uh, TV shows, okay. whatever you want to call it, bravery. This has real, genuine yeah. bravery. The thing I really don't like about the current iteration of Star Trek is it's just pure cowardice. It's pure cowardice playing to a mob. And I just hate that. I See, for me, it's the, even if you agree with the mob, I feel it's the antithesis of Star Trek. You mean uh, telling people what you know they want to hear, not challenging, right, them, in, right. challenging this, them in any way. This is really brave, right? And again, this is. I, I think you saw this more, I think, on Next Generation. I know you got it. Yeah. No, I, I take that back. And, 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 and it's, it's Star Trek well, as well. It, it it's like I said earlier. The, the the thing that struck me with this is it had points of view, but it wasn't preaching. Yeah, yeah, and that, exactly. And that's, what, and that's what Star Trek always kind of was in terms of the original series and the next. Yeah. You know, very much Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek yeah. was not. Um, you know, it didn't really fall on a particular point of view. It would allow you as the audience to decide mm. what side of that debate that you fell on. Um, well, you and, know, and they that used to be all TV. They, they didn't used to be Star Trek. It used to be all of, yeah, all of entertainment you got new to do that. Otherwise, people wouldn't watch it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a real tragedy. Yeah, if you uh, took one, if you took one side, you know, you do alienate another side. So it's always good to be in the middle when you when you do TV shows. Yeah, I understand that totally, totally. I, th I think it falls. I think that if it does make any any real uh, statements that sort of exist outside of that and things that are universal that we can all carry through, it's about a, a respect as well for communication for mm. the people for the people around us, both the people who are close to us, or or the people who we've only only just met. I, th I think that uh, obviously decisions are are made in this, and we see all of the characters are challenged in one way or another. And you see, I mean, for, you know, Kelly is put in this situation, isn't she, where she's had a year's worth of legal training, but it's a year more than Ed had, yeah. so she sort of gets nominated <laughs> to do this, and she's yeah. not one hundred percent. She's not one hundred percent comfortable in doing this. She knows what she believes. She knows what her own morals are. But to step into this role and become an active participant in delivering perhaps some sort of result it's the you know because we all again 
it's one thing to say these things, but to actually deliver on them, have the courage of your convictions and to fight for them. Mm. Again, that's another thing that we all learn at some point in life. Do you know when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it have been interesting if Bordas was a woman and it was a whole female race rather than a, a male race? That And they flipped on its head. That would have been really interesting. That, yeah. uh, no, you know, that's what a, they do now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What do you say, Rabbi? Sorry, mate, I missed you. I'm you sorry, I thought I, I cut Keith off. What, what, what was Keith? Keith, 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 Keith said that's what they'll do today. <laughs> yeah, no, if, if, no, I think by, by, that, that's the cleverness of it by making yeah. it an all male race. Yeah. You, you the you know the the, the Hollywood esque you know media yeah, sure, world sure, go oh same sex marriage same sex yeah, yeah. we like that we're programmed to like that but right. now they're the intolerant ones oh, so it, it just turns things on their head and made people think which is just really clever mm. you know I think a good analogy for this like to get is uh is imagine aliens came came to Earth and were like and they they saw people having uh, having abortions right and the aliens were like. What are you doing? You're killing the baby, right? Yeah, they will totally, yeah. you know, they will, they will totally uh, uh, go on like like the pro life side. It will just blow people's minds, right? It, it's just the yeah. outside point of view. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose when I look across to, I mean, I have to. I'm sorry, I have to look at Star Trek Discovery again. When I look at the relationship between uh, Doctor Paul Stamets in that, uh, Paul Stamets, sorry, and Doctor Colbert, where it didn't, it didn't start out on the show like this, but now they're presented as infallible and perfect and harmonious, and they never really put them in a situation where they can maybe be in, intolerant or belligerent or wrong. Uh, here we've got you know, genuine characters. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Chad Coleman here, who plays Clyden. He's an actor who's been around, he's 46, 47 years old, and he's been in things like The Wire and The Walking Dead. And I've got a little quote here from him where he said that he loves playing the role of Clyde, neither, even under all that makeup, because it says it draws heavily on his Shakespearean training. Everybody, can you see where? Can you see where Chad's coming from with that? <laughs> I, I really can, actually. Yeah. I really can. So can I. <laughs> in 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 this in this, obviously, you could say that they're both straight men, Bortus and Clyde. Well, but not not that straight. <laughs> <laughs> well they are in their society because everybody's everybody's of the same uh, orientation aren't yeah, they? I but, guess uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I yes th i thought it was a great performance and i like the balance between those between those characters it's um because obviously it's there's a touch of the morecambe and wise is about it as well isn't there you know it's <laughs> who is the straight man who's the comedian it's it's like the, tradi the traditional double act in yeah. many respects and i like the fact that both of them are pretty masculine characters you can see there's a dynamic yeah, in the relationship yeah. but yeah. you know they don't they don't lean into sort of stereotypes there either it's it's all it's all very very believable even for an alien race in fact i believe this relationship more than the stamets and Colbert one oh, right, no. right across the right across the board but, to be but fair, you see more what they the well you see what they've done right they basically concentrated on the problem they didn't concentrate on their sexuality or what it's mean what it meant to be with another man or anything like that they concentrate yeah. they just said right that's that's the world that they came from this is the problem that we are presenting you with how are we going to solve this problem and that's how the show proceeded from there they didn't focus on any because because what shows do today for some reason which i cannot understand is focus on people's sexuality whether they're this whether they're that and it and they make they, they make the the story around that but with this it's all about you know the the kid and yes. and and, and okay. which way they're going to go. I go back to the point of obsession. I have an answer to you why why they do this, right? No, I know uh, the answer, mate. You don't have to tell me. It, 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 it's a little more, more detail. The answer basically is racist universally. Wherever you find them, the one truth about them that's a hundred percent always the case is they're always baby-brained morons. They are always <laughs> after. Uh, doesn't matter if they're KKK. If they they're always morons. Every single time they're morons, and when you have morons who happen to be racist, they're just different type of racist than they perhaps were perhaps used to. Uh, uh, they write moronic scripts because they're morons. Because that's <laughs> what happens. You can't expect oh a moron not to be a moron because it's kind of not fair because they are a moron. The problem is we, we don't. <coughs> have morons. We as a society should all turn around and go, "Shut up, moron!" Well. Get out 
No, you're not making so, any more TV. Go and work. <laughs> okay. We'll get cancelled. We'll get cancelled like Gina it's Carano. The, <laughs> it's the eternal problem, isn't it, Rabbi? Between the people who, as you say, are oh, baby-brained morons, you know, people who are, who are balanced, who look at the world and look at people in that respect. When you serve them something, a story that is this honed and this powerful, this poignant on a human level, Obviously, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You you shouldn't necessarily. It's one thing to to transmit your message so that it reaches as many people as possible. But what I like about the Orville is it doesn't talk. You know, not only does it not make the decision for you and tell you what's right and what's wrong, it uh, it doesn't talk down to anybody. Right. It, it's very it's challenging. It's well written and it means it means well. It's uh, it's full of full of genuine genuine heart yeah. i've i've um i've heard uh, seth mcfarlane he's he's described this as um metaphorical uh, metaphorical pure met uh, sci-fi a classic sci-fi metaphor in the in the uh, realms of the twilight zone and the original star trek show mm. and that he wants to explore the dynamics of 21st century sexual politics on earth through through the backdrop specifically through the backdrop of this single gender species because it boils it down i suppose it makes it just the same as the race, uh, the the uh, the racism storyline on the original series that people still talk yep. about now, where the yep. guy's got the face half, half white, half, half face, black. Yeah. You know, it, it does boil it down to the the fact that these that these differences. It doesn't really matter that people people are people. It's selling us the same. It, it's updating the same product in many respects to suit modern to suit to suit the modern obstacles to mm. people. Re reaching a a broader perspective and and a greater understanding uh, and and um in con in continuing the conversation rather than sort of preferring to exist in some sort of some sort of echo echo chamber i must say though this this episode um you know the special effects are <coughs> sorry <coughs> are quite good actually you know even when they went to the planet when they went to borders planet and all those explosions were happening remember they were trying to trying to avoid it when they were because like the whole place is industrial and stuff so and some of the sets are very simplistic but they look really good they look really nice you know and very and very well lit as well especially the um the the uh the the uh, what is it the, the court place you know the, the court yeah. set and it's very well lit very kind of atmospheric but um, it's yeah. a, it must be a tough balance to strike because all the all the things that it's trading off the things that it is homaging they are 25 30 years old now yes and do you, at the end of the day as as much fun as that is would anybody out there would there would it be possible to reach a new audience with something that look looked properly like it was actually made 30 years ago i like the fact yeah. that it that it, it sort of uses the same sort of dimensions and aesthetic but updates the lighting we get a lot more location work mm. we, obviously we get the mm -hmm. better special effects yeah, yeah, do, yeah i must admit what, one of the things that i think about the show and it's particularly to do with the lighting is it, it feels dated to me yes you know bit, it, it yeah. looks mm. it looks like next generation did um mm. surprise surprise uh, but obviously that was lit the way it was because of broadcast standards of the time and, you know, uh, smaller television oh, sets and, and that sort of thing. And and this is the one thing with this is is even though it looks good and I, and I get why they've done it, I do feel like I'm watching the 90s show. But the thing is, though, I'd rather watch something lit this way than watch something like Discovery and a, and a story is trash. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather I'd rather have this kind of lighting, be entertained, than be educated, so-called educated mean, by these shows. Obviously, it's well, really well lit. Obviously, this <laughs> debuted at exactly at exactly the same time as Discovery. As Discovery, so nobody knew what Discovery. we were going to get. <laughs> Discovery, <laughs> yeah. as Discovery. So none of us knew what we were going yeah. to get with that product at all. We didn't know what the what the ambience of it was going to be. We didn't really know what the production values were going to be. Mm. Well, they were fantastic. But, uh, the production. They were, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were. I what, mean, what I yeah, sorry. Go on, sorry, Rabbi. I'll, I'll, I'll say, like, I think when, when they when they both de uh, uh, debuted uh, simultaneously, we we because we're Star Trek fans, we were like, well, well dis disposed to Discovery, right? And although those great production values were really good, that's what really got me involved. It got me into Discovery in those first ten episodes, right? Yeah, I was like, I felt Marvel was kind of like an interesting, kind of fun, disposable thing. But like over the next couple of years, it what a complete turnaround! Like this, I feel this is. 
really, really Star Trek, and it really goes to the essence of what Star Trek is. It's so more... like, he can't work out how they're not being sued. I mean, <laughs> there, there, there is there, there is a lot they they could be sued about, but there, then there are small pockets of 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 Seth in there, like the bit where um his ex wife is uh talking to the guy with the ginger hair. I can't remember the stupid guy to prove no. that he's stupid, <laughs> even though he's a male. Yeah. He's stupid, and I thought that was quite it took me out slightly, but I I'm kind of getting used to that now because you get Star Trek and then you get Seth, don't you? Seth, Seth, little Seth bits, and that was a little yeah. Seth bit where where she was tell, telling them about no. you know what I mean. So I think what's happened know. by default, the one, Ian, what's happened by mm. default is that this show has honed in on something which could be seen as an exercise in nostalgia in all yeah. those ways you just yeah. talked about. But yeah. as in reality, though, as the, as the story of both shows has continued, and as the story of popular culture has continued and weathered through this sort of what we what we commonly call, refer to as the culture war, what I think has defined the Orville, partly, Keith, I think by, by kind of accident, really, through the production values, the lighting that they intended originally to be pretty much pure homage, has been that it's an unspoken statement of optimism and of... Yeah. Uh, purity almost of, of intent of good intention do you know what yeah, i don't think I, that's I the case i think i think seth okay. deliberately went out of his way to say this is star trek it's so obvious when you watch the show because when you watch he must he must know what was going to happen with the the new star trek that. he must Did have he done know how bad discovery was yeah, and be. he must have been really peed that um that he didn't get the job and he knew what they were writing and he knew the because he's 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 in Hollywood so he must have known this this stupid agenda was coming so this is his way of saying screw you you know this is Star Trek and I'm telling you there's no way watching this show that you can't see that if you can't see it I'm telling you do you think that's feasible Keith <laughs> what's that what's do you think feasible? that's feasible, <laughs> do, you think that's feasible? <laughs> do you hear what I said <laughs> uh, sorry, it broke up a little bit. Oh, did so I, I... I was just saying that I think he did. I think Seth went out of his way deliberately to do this, to deliberately to give the middle finger to what was happening with so called Star Trek. Because I, yeah, I, I mean... said, I, there's no way he could not have known that was happening because he's in the heart of Hollywood and he deals with a load of producers. So, anyway. yeah, yeah, no, I, I think, I think, you know, his, his, his definite intention is, you know, for his own purely his own point of view is to make a you know a, a, a star trek I'm sorry, show. It. but it's but playing i can't play yeah, one second oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. i'm sorry i don't want to go That's okay. uh, but one, one of the i have to say even though i think some of the seth humor is is misplaced there was one bit that really did make me laugh out loud and it was when they um you know comparing the 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 sex change where a cleft palate and uh oh, yeah, he yeah. said he said he said yes but a, a a vagina doesn't have a lisp well depending on how <laughs> you use it. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> that was very funny yeah. Out, like, yeah, absolutely yeah. absolutely killer lines I mean, this episode does make you think it does stay with you and for all that we've heaped all this praise on it reactions were still we're still mixed uh, there was a lot of passionate reviews i, I remember and, and people who, within the community i think within star trek fans and sci-fi mm. fans uh, still slightly resistant to come to to come to the party and accept that and accept that the orville was for real that the show did, was more than how it looked that there was something going on under the surface mm. and and that seth mcfarlane was, demonstra was demonstrating a uh, a growth and a literate quality to his to his work, rather than a stream of knob gags and and various of the sight gags that you get on Family Guy and all those other other shows. I think there are sight gags in this, and I think you, somebody mentioned the boxing match in this with yeah. Alara taking on Bortus like that in the boxing. I think I think sequences like that, Rabbi, as as an illustrator yourself, that is something that could have quite easily been storyboarded for animation. Is it? I think we get moments like that throughout the Orville. Yeah. Yeah, I get. Listen, I, I I'm convinced the Orville it was what was pitched to, instead of lower. Uh, they they took they stole that pitch and made lower decks out of it because the Orville is uh, just understand Star Trek. You can see it understanding it, and you can see lower decks completely not understanding it. Right? I mean, I, 
Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of Star Trek <laughs> fans were all for Discovery. I mean, me and me and Keith were crazy about when the first season started. I didn't think much of the first episode, and, and Keith loved the first episode. And he and he and and me and Keith, we really were were into the first the first season of of Discovery. And then suddenly, the second the second um, season completely destroyed my faith in it completely. And I think that's what's happened is that when, when both of them started, all the real Star Trek fans were going, nah, that's not real Star Trek. And then suddenly when they did that huge U-turn in the season two, everybody's going, you know what? Orville's not so bad. <laughs> that's what I say. It's not so bad. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, the, 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 you know, Star Trek has suffered from mismanagement, um, yeah. you know, you know, sadly, but that's that's a whole nother thing. But um, what one of the one of the things that I did enjoy about both of these episodes is the uh, gelatinous life form character <laughs> that they have oh, in it. Yeah. They, they clearly has about... the hots for the doctor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love We're that. talking about Yafet, aren't we, who's who's appeared in a couple of these episodes so far, just in little sequences here and there, but the more we get deeper into the show, the more he has to say for himself. Got a massive crush on, on Claire, clearly, and she can only indulge him so far as his as his doctor, as his medical officer. Again, delightful stuff amazing special effects as well yeah yeah, well, cool. yeah I, I feel like this is kind of orville's take on the horta uh alien which was from the original <laughs> yeah, I think show you're right. I think you're right. they didn't have the technology to do and and they're kind of doing it now but uh but again you know on the inappropriate side but it was funny when he goes <laughs> Look at this, there's plenty yeah. more where this comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute filth. <laughs> you know who, 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 uh, who that is? The, the, act, the voice actor for that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He sounds very familiar, though. Norm MacDonald. Who? Uh, who's that? Norm MacDonald. Oh, Norm MacDonald, the, the, this chat show guy. Uh, he had a chat show, right? Uh, no, he, he had a chat show on Netflix for like seven episodes on a, on a budget of I don't know, four four pound twenty seven p. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a um, but he, he, he's a comedian, does stand up. Uh, yeah, I know who you mean. For a long time mm. doing the news, right? It's very, it's, yeah. it's very. Yeah. I want to very quickly mention Brandon Braga, who directed directed this. He's the uh, fifty six year old director and executive producer of The Orville. He's best known for his work, too, across the Star Trek franchise, as we've talked about quite a bit whilst whilst looking at this episode. He wrote and was the executive producer on Next Generation, Voyager and Enterprise. And he was a co-writer on First Contact and I think maybe on the following one on, Ins on Insurrection. No, Generations. Generations. He's a co-writer on Generations. That was it. And he'd worked his way up through that whole process. I think he'd been an intern on The Next Generation, too. Post-Star Trek, he went on to work on shows like 24 and uh, that short-lived show, uh, Terra Nova, which I think involved dinosaurs or something. Or I never actually saw that. Written, but written by my friend. Written by my friend. Really? Kelly um, Marcel, yeah. Oh, so that's interesting. Go. We'll have to look at that at some point. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's said that uh, it was early conversations between Seth, Seth MacFarlane and Brandon Braga whilst they were working on another project entirely a few years earlier that kind of led to the Orville coming into into existence what they the balance that they wished to strike was between obviously between traditional pr traditional star trek both of them missed episodic storytelling particularly in sci-fi but they wanted to sort of drizzle in the comedy in the same way that the the uh, the series mash used to about the mobile ar army hospital mm -hmm. which i know was incredibly popular i've never really seen mash i've never seen the film but and yet i know what they mean just by the scenes that i've seen ian are you a mash fan mm. can you see where that where the I, line is I, i've seen a couple of episodes yeah and i do get what 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 they what they um mean but you know what right they could really implement this into the star trek world couldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they could. Not happy until they do that, are you? <laughs> no. Well, I'm just saying, as I said, you know, it's it's pu it's a puzzle to me how we got away with this. It really is. I, I I'm totally so. puzzled. N knowing knowing Hollywood, like every, every if you felt if you knocked someone accidentally, someone could see you in Hollywood. You know that that's how bad it is. You know what I mean? So, and I, I don't I don't understand how we got away with this at all because this is definitely Star Trek. The way it's lit, everything about it is Star Trek. And yeah, but, but like, specifically, legally, what what is Star Trek? Like that—that's that, like like 
uh, proprietary Star Trek. It's spaceships. So you can't say that Star Trek. It's uh, like 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 what is Star Trek? Yeah, but look at um look at that guy that made that computer game, and uh, Discovery ripped it off. And yeah, everything, but, and it was obvious it was a rip off uh, because everything allegedly. in that computer game allegedly. was in the show. Allegedly. Well, alle okay, allegedly. <laughs> but, but if you look at it very carefully. The difference is this the difference is this being on the inside and being on the outside. Being on the, yeah. on the inside, you, they, 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 things go. They let things no, go. No, no, you can't look. This is Star Trek. Yeah, and that, could... That's what I think it is. That's really that's, that's exactly. I, I don't understand how we got away with this. I don't, I, don't, I really don't understand this at all. I, I, I think. I think He's I, one of the elite. Like, this is what you yeah, get. Maybe, I, maybe. I think I think there were two mm. things that, that let him get away with this uh, mm. legally. One mm. was the, even though they've got holodecks and replicators and so many Star Trek-esque things, they yeah. don't have a transporter, which has always yeah, yeah. been Star the Trek, staple yeah. of all Star Trek. And mm. the other thing is, I'm sure it is the you know the the comedy parody aspect of it is another reason you know is another way that they're able to get away with it because um you you, you know sometimes when you say something is a spoof or a send up or a parody that gets you around um various sort of yeah. legal um similarities so I, I think it's a mixture of those two things is what has allowed him to uh to get away with making this with a different network, you know? I, yeah, but I, as, I, as, I, as I said, with that computer game, it was obvious that it to anyone, to anyone in this entire world that has logic in their head, it's obvious that they that Discovery ripped them off. But yet he lost that court case. So yeah, so, so yeah, we, because it's dependent on, on who has more resources, who who has more money. I guess I guess it, but it, you're it, probably it, right. it, yeah, mm. then that, that's what they, unfortunately that's what it is. Yeah. I've given a little bit of thought to that this week. As we've watched these couple of episodes and the two before, what is so different about this? Where where are those lines in the sands? How, how do they get away with it? And mm. I've come to the conclusion that the main thing that this is missing that uh, makes it not Star Trek isn't, I don't think we've mentioned it at all yet. I realised that when I listened back to our, our uh, first episode of this show, I realised that I myself was referring to all of these characters by their first names. Ed. Claire, mm. Kelly, Gordon, all of these characters by their first names. And I thought, God, that's really strange because with Star Trek, I don't do that. No, it's always don't. Captain Picard. I always view them as, as Commander Data. That That's Dax. That's Dr. Bashir. I always think of them by their titles. Uh, the last time that I thought of a cast of this kind of show and used their first names was the original series of Star Trek. It's Jim. <laughs> It's Bones, yeah. it's Spock. You know, it's it's like that. I mean, we didn't know Uhura's first name then, but I'm sure it would have been the same with her. So I thought, okay, well, what's changed and why? Why was it the '90s Star Trek, which I love? I you know, I love all that stuff. What was so different about it? Why did I? Why have I never used those first names for those characters? And why weren't they in the script? And I think I think what it is is because in the original series of Star Trek how it worked with that trinity at the centre of it, was that uh, it's very clear who was who and how the dynamics of how it functioned. I think that uh, you know, you've got, you've got uh, Hart, you've got um, sort of uh, a grizzled sort of veteran in Dr. McCoy, you know, the, you've got the, the ego and the id, all these things. People describe it in many, many ways. But I think that it was the difference between, um, in Spock's case, you've got this character that was... Um, uh, logic obviously and more importantly stoicism and i think by the time by the time star trek came back into its golden age with tng and all those other shows it had gone from a show that was balanced where that you got one character who was the stoic one to a crew made made up of an entire group of people and from a version of humanity where everybody was the, the stoic one stoicism was something that seemed to have been incorporated into the human race the Orville, I don't. I think it's back to that ballot from the stoic. original. <laughs> That's true. So yeah, there's nobody. The stoicism is not really. I think. I think you've got uh, the android. He's that. He's that. I wouldn't even say Bortus is is like that. Stoicism has been completely drained from this version of the future. And although that probably wouldn't stand up in a court of law, I think it's very no, it important. It's very important as regards the storytelling of this and why it feels so different, why I relate to the characters in the way that I do. 
I'm going to score this one out of five, I think. Should we go with fives? That way we can go for the halves. What would you score this one out of five, Key? Five gelatinous yaffets. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would give this a four out of five. I, I think, um, you, you know, solid episode, uh, well, well executed, well written, well directed, and about something. Yes, okay, it had dick jokes in there as well, but overall it was about something so uh i thought yeah good four out of five ian um i give it a three three out of five and that's Ooh. a good score tell you the truth but the, the only reason why i give it a three out of five is because the story is even though it was very entertaining it's not original it's obviously something from star trek and it's very very reminiscent of of uh, a measure of a man yeah. so that's the only reason why i give it a three but as the rabbi would say, or go. <laughs> it was it was entertaining. It was really entertaining. <laughs> How about you, Rabbi? What would you score this one out of five? Uh, well, I, I had to put it in two different scales. I said, like in a in a general television scale, is a four. It's a three and a half to four. In a twenty twenty one television scale, it's a seven. You know, it, <laughs> it, it, it me, it's, it's I think it, it knocked it really out of the park. Uh, just, just by being where where it is in this day and age, right? It's been by its bravery, and again, you just don't see bravery in entertainment anymore. You just see this utter cowardice. Mm. You see very, very little entertainment in entertainment anymore. I'm going to give this a four. <laughs> I'm going to give this a four. <laughs> I'm going to give this a four as well. I think it's incredibly high quality, and I was tempted to to. Uh, give it the four marks, to be truthful, if it wasn't for the fact that I do like to give my series places to go. And from memory, I'm very sketchy about a lot of the episodes in this series in particular, but I believe that it does get better. So I've got to leave it, leave it that room. But I thought this was a very confident story, very moving story, so, so poignant and and whole. I Every episode of this rewatch so far, I've enjoyed it so so much. Okay, and in some yeah. in some respects, just as you were describing, Rabbi, I, I'm, I'm noticing those little details too, Ian, that that we talked about. Little things with props. Sometimes it's not even in a line of dialogue. Mm. Just something that's going on. Some little detail. There's so much attention and, and, What's and love in poured this, into this. This is the third. Is it the third episode? Right. It is. And usually, when it comes to a TV show, they get up to that point towards the end of the season usually yeah. that, that, that's how that's how it normally goes i mean but but seth look i hate to say this but seth is a really good writer really imaginative chap um and you just got to look at his body of work you know and with this it's no exception this this story was written by him right this story is written by him it was and it was originally so, going to be it was originally going to be much much later in the season as well ian so there you go so you know i mean seriously you know this is Sorry to say this, Star Trek. <laughs> this is Star Trek. What can I Good say? Good stuff. Yeah. Well, we're going to get, we'll look at another episode of The Orville in a moment. But 